and um, really appreciate you taking the time to um, attend today's session. Um, uh, this is all about talent and <laughs> this is no surprise to anyone of us that talent is in short supply. And so um, today's program will be focusing on on uh, what the Alliance has developed called Earn and Learn. Let me first ask Steve, who is uh, managing everyone entering the room. Uh, Steve, can you still see the PowerPoint present presentation? Yes, I can, and we are at um, 46 groups or people joining so far. OK, great. Um, I think I'm going to start, even though um, I know we'll have more joining us. So again, thanks Steve Meyer from Fox Valley Technical College for um, helping me manage the people entering the room. Um, I know some of you um, are not Alliance members, so I'd like to just briefly share a little bit about the organization. Uh, so the organization was started in 2006 and started with 12 companies and now has over 300 members. Uh, about 200 of them being manufacturing. Our vision statement is that every Northeast Wisconsin manufacturer will find the talent it needs. And earn and learn is one of the opportunities that I'd like to present to you that can help us and help, can help your company find the talent it needs. So K-12 is an important thing for the Alliance and um, Besides earn and learn, we have been doing a lot of different things, even in 2022 during a pandemic. Um, in February, because our companies couldn't host in-person plant tours, um, we actually had companies film virtual plant tours and presented that to schools throughout the 18 counties of Northeast Wisconsin. We also are sponsoring Find Your Future events in Appleton and Green Bay. In fact, over 5,000 students will be receiving our 2022 All-Star magazines at that event. We also, um, for several years, have been doing an underwater robotics competition. You can see a picture of the robot that kids, middle school students make um, called Sea Perch, and that's taking place April 2nd. And Anne, sorry to interrupt, but sure. your uh, slide is not uh, progressing. It's still okay. on the main page. OK, thank you. Appreciate that. Let me do this. You should not be seeing my PowerPoint at this time, correct? Can you see it at this time? It just popped up. Yes, there we go. Great. Wonderful. I'm going to leave it e even though it's not on the full uh, slideshow, but I think this will manage it better. So um, as you can see here, um, we also have been, um, we worked with um, Greenville Middle School and Hortonville Middle School on um, a program prior to the pandemic called You Can Make It Career Expos. What they are is an opportunity for kids to instead of just walking through an exhibit hall with people talking about their careers, they actually are doing a hands-on project with that company uh, for 19 minutes as the company talks to them about their uh, jobs and the company. And so we'll be hosting those again on April 5th and April 27th. And as an Alliance member, if you're not registered, uh, please do. Um, the exhibit booths are free. And then we also have our Get Real Math and Get Real Science videos. Those videos showcase how math is, and science is used in the workplace. And we have over 60 of these videos and teacher lesson plans that schools all over the nation now are using. So K-12 has always been important to the Alliance. And one of the key things about our organization is that we do not have any committees, but we have task forces. And this is an actual task force uh, picture of one of our uh, task forces, where we have people from industry, education, come together and talk about issues and develop solutions. We really truly have a task at hand, and that task is to be solving the talent shortage in Northeast Wisconsin. 
And at the K-12 um, meeting in 2018, um, we, I love this saying, Houston, we have a problem. Have a good afternoon. Because we had a problem. And the problem was this. Colleges were investing in the high schools to have transcribed credits, but they didn't see a lot of kids actually then after graduation <coughs> move forward and go into their colleges for those degrees that they took the classes in high school. We also heard from manufacturers that they need talent and though they needed in 2018, I think you need it more now as well as talking to parents and students. They're like, how do we pay for college? And so our task force really worked on that issue. One of the things that we were talking to manufacturers were these two obstacles. One is they did not want to offer part time employment. And that's a huge issue because there is a talent pool out there that is willing and interested in working your companies, but they need part time. So that was a huge issue as we were trying to find ways to help students go on to college and be successful because we found that a lot of students who were trying to go to college full time and work. Um, excuse me, go to college full time and work full time. It just didn't work. I am a living example of that. I tried that when I was 19, going to college full time and working full time, and I actually dropped out. I eventually did go back for my degree, so that was the issue. We had a talent base that these kids that were interested in part time, but our companies didn't have that opportunity. We also knew that another obstacle manufacturers had is they do offer tuition reimbursement, but mostly for um, their employees that work full time. So that was an issue that I wanted to bring right up to the table right up front for the manufacturers in the room. Earn and Learn is a program that we identify high school students that are interested in working for companies after high school graduation. They want to work for that company part time and we're looking for companies to pay the tuition for that student to work part time and go to college part time. So this is the process. We are working with our colleges and them identifying students that have transcribed credit or have youth apprenticeship. The key is these students actually have some skills from the transcribed credit classes they've taken in manufacturing and their youth apprenticeship. So these are students that really are coming to the table with talent. The college rep then shares the program with the student and parents. Next, I'm excited that we actually just hired a couple weeks ago a talent coordinator for the organization. Her name is Maria Gonzalez. She'll be working with the students, the colleges to identify manufacturers. Those interested students, we will then connect to manufacturing companies to have them do a plant tour. After the plant tour, the company will contact the student for an interview. The company then hires the student to start either during their second semester of their senior year or right after graduation. Most of the students that um, are working during the summer going into their college term will be working full time and then transitioning to part time in the fall. And then there will be a signing day and that enrollment into college. Um, our signing day last year was at Lambeau Field and we hope to do that again where we had three companies that participate in the pilot of this program. What I'd like to do now is have the companies actually talk about their experience 
with earn and learn and the value they found in investing in these young adults. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to invite Jim Kronkowitz to speak on behalf of BPM. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Am I okay? Yes, you're good. Thank you. All right, great. No, the program, the Earn and Learn program, I guess, is something that we kind of looked at beyond some of the other vocational programs that were at the local high schools as such. And there are a lot of them, and they all have their benefits and, you know, challenges. Uh, I think, Ann, you prepped this very well by doing a brief history and how the process works. I think the, there's a nuts and bolts part of it that um, you're right, the manufacturers need talent. Now it's identifying it and to help coordinate this process. We went through it with a young fella from Peshtigo and little Peshtigo, 3000 people up here. Uh, we still have needs, we have manufacturing needs. He's local, talk to him. He was studying environmental water science and uh, naturally a paper mill uses a lot of water. So connected with him and went through it to to a point of, all right, you're going after this type of degree, you like the area, here's an opportunity, let's talk about this a little bit. And we actually did talk to his professor at college to get their insight and say, how can we help and make this work? Uh, something you mentioned early on, Ann, is the, the uh, lack of manufacturing interest to do part-time. Uh, in today's world, it's a must. You have to, to fill your needs of, of employees. So that's part of it. When we got into the uh, reimbursement and that, you're right. A lot of companies reimburse for full-time employees, but I look at this as an investment in a part-time employee and he's going to school to learn things to hopefully become that full-time employee down the road. And you have a way to uh, instill in them what you're looking for, what needs they like. And there's a lot of interaction between the students. This young fella is set. Uh, I just found out this morning, he passed his first exam for a water treatment operator. Um, so he's all set. And I, I hit him kind of straight in, you know, straight up today. I said, I'm gonna be pretty blunt here, Mitchell. Uh, are you looking to continue employment here after graduation, which is coming up in May? His response was absolutely. And so that's a win for both sides. So I look at it as it's a plus for us with the retirements that are coming up. We need to focus some of our energy on getting that specific talent. And this is one way of doing that through the Earn and Learn program. There are some costs, but those co <laughs> the benefits far outweigh the costs. So any, any questions for me, I'll certainly be willing to respond or help out or talk about it. Uh, I've, been, I've been familiar with a lot of the different programs along the way, the GPS program, you have the vocational studies programs in school, a lot of different things. So there are different avenues, but I'm really, really happy that we got in on this one. So thanks. Jim, this is Steve. Um, a quick question for you. Uh, you referred to that there are costs. Can you explain that a little bit more? Because um, costs not necessarily being part of earn and learn, but more so um, just obviously the salary that you would be paying the person part-time. Am I correct with that? Part of it is the salary you're paying them part-time. But a lot of that, again, goes back to that I've talked to the technical college and college is about. And uh, with our great web out there, there's all kinds of information of what you would pay a part-time student to do these types of things. Uh, I, I look at, fortunately, minimal cost of tuition as such because he lives at home, travels to Green Bay for tech college classes and stuff. And they're doing a lot of classes at home as well now, too. So those are the only real costs that are involved. 
Great. Just wanted to clarify that there wasn't a, a subscription to earn and learn or anything to be part of this organization. Just uh, no, there's not. Gotcha. Let's next have Chris Nielsen from Robinson share their experience uh, with their female welder. Well, thank you, Ann. I'm also going to introduce uh, Jessica Banker. Um, Jessica and I work tandem um, with uh, Earn and Learn and our Youth Apprentice Program, so we're going to kind of tag team a little bit here. But first of all, thank you, Ann, for allowing Robinson really to share a little bit of our experiences and our thoughts on Earn and Learn. Um, Robinson really has been doing versions of this uh, for some time now. We do hire part-time employees. We bring them on in a number of different ways, and then we try to identify, are we going to help them out um, and uh, going further? Um, we work with local high schools, um, the youth apprentice programs um, that are available in the colleges. We work with NWTC. We work with Fox Valley Tech, uh, Lakeshore Tech, and UWGB. Um, on your eight-step program that you have there, what we try to do is really help with uh, doing the tours. We, we do that already. Um, and then we do um, the interview process. We bring those employees or those potential employees through full interview process. And then we um, identify where direction we want to go there. Jessica? Yeah, yeah. And with uh, our young lady that we, we hired on, um, she came into a part-time position that we had a number of part-time employees into. She came to us through the Youth Apprenticeship Program, um, which as Chris said, we, we have several of them. And she, through that evaluation process, it, it's a normal interview process like any of our other candidates go through. So um, she got some of that good real world experience as well. Um, determined she's a good fit for what we're looking for. And um, when Jim was talking about, about costs along with that, for us, the cost um, is, is our direct labor employee. She's working on our work, our projects, um, but learning and growing uh, along the way. Um, I think from our standpoint, some things we've learned as we've worked through um, with, with our candidate are, offering flexibility with part time too. So maybe maybe she had to attend school, but had the opportunity to work for a couple hours in the morning, go to school and then come back for a couple hours in the afternoon. From our standpoint, the work that we had available for her to do, we could accommodate that. Um, so as part of that process, she was also assigned a lead who acted as a mentor to her as well. Um, and then we had touch points with the manager as well as our HR department um, to make sure that, you know, we're, we're seeing the work and the development come through her, but she's also getting what she needs uh, out of the program too. So um, out of that, one really neat thing was to see the engagement from her coworkers come in. So some of our more senior welders that were working side by side, um, sharing different tips and tricks with her and also helping in her development. Um, um, we didn't know how that would work, especially being a very male dominated workforce um, to bring this young female into it. And she brought the right culture fit for our environment um, and it was embraced. So that was that was really exciting to see. So when she was ready to take that next step, it was a really easy decision for us to say, hey, we want to help with your schooling and, and pay for that. Um, so that's that's where we made that commitment with her. Yeah. One, one thing I find uh, very interesting in the eight steps uh, is really the signing day. Um, it, it, we were you know, fortunate enough to be identified as having this talent. And on signing day, it was really interesting on the, the engagement side, not only from our employee, our, our, um, their family, their family was really engaged in it. And then our senior leadership, we all gathered together. And as Jessica just said, it was, um, it's interesting to see some team members that maybe have been more, they're more tenured and they're coming together and they wanted to go to the event. So um, we actually have a really nice picture taken of all of us together. So um, the engagement part of it is something maybe you don't expect, but you're really building that long lasting relationship uh, throughout the whole team. And just finally, like, why would we support uh, a program like this? 
in today's hiring market, um, I don't know how you make the decision not to. <laughs> um, you got to take an active role in developing your internal talent. And this pipeline of youth is readily available and out there. It's just identifying who's the right fit for your organization as part of it. And this development of the internal process is really complementary to our, con our current recruiting practices as well. What, one last thing I'd like to add, just because Jim brought it up, is we're always available. Also, Jessica and I, if you have any questions or comments or want to talk to either one of us, we're more than available to kind of go through that with you and help you through that. So that's pretty much it, Ann. Great, thank you. Um, we'll um, hold off on questions until we have Michelle from Exact Tech Marine Travel Lift uh, present. Michelle. Good. Good afternoon and thank you so much for having me and I'm happy to happy to be here and speak on behalf of Vladimir. Um, so you know, this was a, a pilot program like you had mentioned and I definitely came in blind to it. You know, sweet little Allison, thank you so much Allison, sent us Vladimir and I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I'll take a stab at it. And I am so glad we did it. I've never looked back. Vladimir has just been an amazing standard and example of a high school student who graduated from Preble comes all the way to Sturgeon Bay, um, Marine Travel and Exact Tech are in Sturgeon Bay, um, and he comes here and he worked full time for us in the summer of 2021. And then like Anne, he tried to work full time um, this fall when he went to school and I had to have a sit down with him and say, stop it. Um, you are going to burn yourself out. And as much as I need you, I'm not going to let you drop out of school. Um, so because he lives in Green Bay and we're in Sturgeon Bay and he goes to NWTC in Green Bay, our part time for him is actually he only works a couple days a week. So instead of working every day and driving to Sturgeon Bay every day, he does about 25 hours a week in his schedule on second shift. Um, so it works out really great for him. And he is just an amazing, amazing young man to come in again, very similar to what Chris and Jessica said. Our staff of senior members are complimenting him and they want to work with him and they're sitting with him. He comes, he always makes sure he works on a food day. Um, so he always comes to our company events and always gets, you know, we treat him as he is a normal full time student because or full time employee, because that's really how we view him. He comes to our food days, he gets his gift cards, he loves the employee interaction. They're always taking care of him and sitting with him. Um, he does have a family member that works here. That family member does work first shift, so they don't work together. Um, so that is nice too that you know individuals are still working with him and complimenting him. Um, we're very eager to have him work full time again this summer, and um, hopefully when he's done with his two year program, we will continue to keep him on. He is performing already as a valued employee that has been here for a long time. He catches on not afraid to ask questions, not afraid to die right in. So it's just a really great asset to our team. Um, and I look at the earn and learn as also a marketing tool for us. If I could get one person, Vladimir, from his class to say, hey, look what Exact Tech is doing for me. Look at Exact Tech working with my schedule and paying me a full time wage plus shift differential and inviting me to all of this stuff and including me in company incentive programs and picnics, it's a marketing tool for us to have other students of his friends that say, well, where I'm working, they're not doing that. Let me come work for you. So I look at the youth apprenticeship program. I look at the earn and learn program. I look at working with NWTC and Sturgeon Bay and Green Bay as marketing tools to word of mouth is going to be your biggest referral during these hard recruiting times. And if I can take an 18 year old to spread that word for me, by golly, I'll do it. Um, it's been a great attribute for us. Allison sent me another resume a couple weeks ago and I was so excited. Unfortunately, that one didn't work out. Again, it's, it's difficult for us in Sturgeon Bay when they come from Green Bay. We understand that. But it's definitely a program that I would highly recommend. Um, Allison and Ann have just been great to work with and really have vested their time in these candidates. So we know that we're getting a good candidate that is going to be dedicated, is going to work hard and really has the pride in, in their job and to want to do both. So. Um, I have I don't have any I wish they would have or I wish it would do this. It's just all positive and all positive students and very polite students. Um, you know, you think of it, these students start talking to you when they're seniors in high school. At least that's been my um, experience um, and just good head on their shoulders. Very polite, ready to enter the workforce. Um, so we're excited for that. So thank you so much for letting me chat about that. 
So a question, uh, do you pay all tuition costs or a portion? Um, that is still to be determined. <laughs> um, we are working with um, Vladimir to see what his costs are. Um, so I don't have a an answer on that. We will decide um, probably in the next month because he is he's done for some his first year in, in May. So I don't have an answer for that. I can answer for us for Ava. We did pay for her full tuition um, for attending NWTC for the welding program. And uh, I'll answer for BPM. Yes, we paid the full tuition of uh, book costs as such things that are needed. But uh, as we went through this little process, and I have one more comment with the manufacturers, we've identified that, you know, with the students and stuff like that, a lot of it is getting the parental involvement. And this does get some of the parental involvement, but as to help pay for tuition and those types of benefits, uh, varied schedules, also, also gets the parents involved and engaged. When you hit them in the pocketbook, uh, it gets their attention a little bit. And I think that's part of it too. Thanks. Great point, Jim. And with the Earn and Learn program, we're not trying to be prescriptive. Um, each company can determine um, what they are going to offer that student, if um, where they'll pay the tuition right at the beginning of that course or after um, the course is done and um, uh, having a B or C or better. Um, some companies require that after they're completed with their college um, and that the company had paid their tuition that they need to work for them for at least two years. It's really up to your company. So you can all participate in this program and have your own unique situations. But just be mindful that you're not the only company that that student's looking at. And so it's a competitive market. So you want to give the best offer possible because these students with going to college part time, they're going to be working for you longer um, because it's not going to be just one year by the time they get done with their uh, college uh, degree. Um, I see a question here. Are high school seniors who are under the age of 18 able to work in the manufacturing environment like youth apprenticeship program does? I can respond. The answer is yes. There are certain restrictions uh, from OSHA and that that are clearly identified, but it is a um, YA type program. So it has the same type, type uh, restrictions and that, but we found in the paper industry, it has always been a challenge and years past, you had to be 18 because they didn't want to deal with all of those ramifications. Today, it is so much easier. Yes, they can. Yeah, I can echo that from from Jim's standpoint too. from our manufacturing standpoint. There's um, a couple pieces of equipment that are very well defined that if you're actually identified as a youth learner, you can operate while under that youth apprentice program. But maybe if you're just under 18, you can't. Um, but that's been very few pieces that we've ran into. Otherwise, for the most part, it, it's the same requirements. And remember, many of these students are going to be starting working at your company after graduation, so they're 18. We know a lot of even senior uh, second semester uh, high school students are 18 as well. Thank you, Paisley, for sharing that information. Other questions? And you can type them in the chat box or you can unmute. A couple of our key partners um, are Allison Bowie from NWTC and Steve Meyer from Fox Valley Tech. But that doesn't mean that that's the only colleges we're working with. Um, and we're also working, for example, with the uh, Envision Fond du Lac, where um, they're working with us in identifying people in their project grill that um, might be good uh, participants of this earn and learn program. So um, at least for the pilot, um, our key partners were the two technical colleges, um, but that doesn't mean 
that's the only groups that we are working with. Correct. Um, uh, the question is, um, if I'm correct, youth apprenticeship is going to more aim towards high school and earn and learn is going to be more aimed towards seniors college level, correct? So those um, students that um, helping them pay for college where, of course, if it's youth apprenticeship, um, they're not paying for college. So let me share with you kind of some next steps. So um, later today, I'm going to be sending out an email that is going to have a link um, if you're interested in getting more information as well as getting um, connected with um, my talent coordinator who will be working with the colleges on identifying companies to participate in this program. By filling out that survey, you're under no obligation. Um, we know it has to be the right fit for you and the student, um, but this will give us a, a list of companies that would be interested in offering one, the plan tours, and then possible employment um, after graduation and investment in tuition um, in that student. Then um, we will be working with the colleges on uh, getting those connections, identifying interested students, and then um, Maria from my office will be connecting with the employers on setting up those plant tours. And then the goal is that once you do make that offer, you let us know. So that way you can also, along with your uh, employee, your new employee can participate in the August Earn and Learn program. We had great media coverage at that event um, and it's a great celebration um, where these young adults have their family and friends come to celebrate um, this huge opportunity. Because you know a lot of high schools, um, they have where well, here are the students that got college scholarships. Well, by you investing in uh, their tuition, it is like a college scholarship. So we want to recognize you as companies for the support. And um, thank you, Vicki. Um, your question is that you're a high school staff member. Where should I direct potential students? You can um, reach out to myself or um, you can also reach out to Maria and I'll be sending that information to the schools and then we'll be um, I know that you are in Oshkosh. Um, I'll be connecting you to Steve as well. So I know each um, organization is going to have your own unique um, requirements, and that's why we don't want it to be prescriptive. We want to be flexible to what your company's needs are and who would be the best contacts at the schools. So each college is going to be a little different. Other questions before we conclude today? So in the, go ahead, Steve. You just have a couple of comments, uh, Anne, if you don't mind. Uh, so Chris, you had mentioned uh, from Robinson, Chris had mentioned that you would already been doing many of the similar things. And I think a, a lot of the folks on this call are doing this. And so to me, what would prompt you uh, as a company that well, we already do this, we already allow um, tuition reimbursement, we already hire folks. So what is the benefit of this? And that has been a question that's come up a number of times um, I do know that working with a lot of companies and a lot of schools, uh, when relationships take a while to be created, and when those relationships are created, uh, people move around so much, whether it be a teacher in the school, a school counselor, uh, an HR representative in your company. And when those people leave, it oftentimes starts that relationship and that work completely over. And I think what's one thing that's beneficial, and, and probably Allison and I have both seen the benefit of this now is, we actually have a sustainable process going on um, that doesn't detract from what any of you folks are doing or the relationships you have already. Um, it just may allow that um, if you do have a person in HR that leaves and someone brand new that comes in and you want to get them started right away, we've got the, the resources and the companies also that can help uh, behind that. So I, I do think that's really beneficial. I um, also wanted to mention uh, with Jim, uh, Jim had mentioned about the parents getting uh, excited about this, and uh, we all know that for a 17, 18 year old to have that support 
from homes were not only uh, going into employment um, and, and sustaining that employment, but also going to school is really important. And we also know that there are a lot of young individuals that don't necessarily have that support. And so this can be that support structure. Um, we recently had a visitation day here at our college where parents and, and juniors in high school can come and tour our areas. And they're oftentimes overwhelmed because even though we think an 18 year old should be able to handle all this, there is a lot of stuff from financial aid to getting your courses set up um, along with work. And we find sometimes that that student that's a lot of work and it may be easier to just, and not that this is a bad thing, but possibly go get a job, um, say at a convenience store or a fast food restaurant that is not in the area of their interest, um, some of the interests that you have at, at your, your school. So it's a nice way to intervene and give them some of that support. And we have more and more parents in the last two years coming to us and, and asking us about, tell me about this going to school and getting paid and working while going to school. So that is a trend that is going um, around with parents right now and is uh, something that is a, a very viable uh, thing that they're looking at for their young people. So thanks. Mm -hmm. Allison, um, do you want to share a little bit about some of your couple experiences with the young adults and parents that you've worked with? Really, it's <laughs> echoing uh, everyone's story. So um, I think we, it, there's so many students and I just don't want them to be forgotten that this is a really big uh, pool of candidates to that they just don't know what they don't know. And so some of those students don't have that guiding light at home too. So um, they need an employer to understand that you don't know who the student's going to be, and that student might need that uh, a, a bigger guiding light. Um, and that can be very transformational, um, which then empowers your your employees too. So everything that everyone's already said, it's just it's so refreshing to I love working with trade students, so uh, maybe I'm biased. So um, I there I, I they all work, but are they working for you, I guess, is my question. Well said. So I hope that you will consider um, investing in these young adults, and they really are really special, amazing people. I, I loved meeting them at the Earn and Learn signing day. And so I will be sending out that survey. And um, again, doesn't require you to definitely then hire somebody, but then it at least moves us to the next step. So again, thank you. I'd like to thank um, the companies that participated, especially um, in our pilot program, uh, BPM, Rock um, Robinson, as well as Marine Travel Lift slash Exact Tech. Thanks everyone for participating today and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you.